All right. So when we left off, I was saying never touch this and never touch that uh, because that's the high end and low end adjustments. And then we start talking about what are all of the uh, connections on here. So uh, we talked about this one is the, uh, the drain in case we have a, a seal leak. You want some place for the fuel to go safely and drain back down. And so if you have any fuel coming out of here, or oil coming out of there, that's a bad thing. And thankfully, these are all well labeled. So fuel pump inlet. So this is going to come from the boost pump down into here. So this is where the main fuel is going to come outlet. in. That's the outlet. I'm sorry. Uh, fuel pump inlet right here. Thank you. For <laughs> Up here on top of the swirl chamber. Um, vapor return. So that one's usually a little bit smaller looking than that one. Going back to the tank. And then fuel pump outlet, which is going to go out to obviously the fuel control unit. Um, and then there's one that's not being shown on the other side. And that is where you're gonna have a return. So you have to have, so one, two, three, back here, four, five, is that right? Five, fuel pump inlet, outlet. So you have to have two inlets. So there's gonna be another inlet over here. So there is quite a lot going on. All right, so this particular style, remember there's gonna be really two different styles we're gonna look at. You can tell it has the mixture control back here. If it has the mixture control back here, then it's going to have a throttle body that looks like this. And it's going to have this attached to the side. And this right here is going to contain the fuel, uh, uh, for lack of better terms, one of the fuel metering orifices here that is, a, that is attached directly to the throttle plate. And if you, let me see what's next. All right, and then the, there's the other style where you don't have the mixture control attached to the fuel pump. Then you're going to have this style that is going to have this fuel control assembly. So this is where we're going to really, really dive into this one. Once you understand this one, it's easier to understand the other one. So in this particular style, let me see what else I have for my pictures here. Hang on. Um, Let's see, might be easier to look at this one. Real quick. This is what it looks like as it's all plumbed together. And so we can see where we are in, in, in uh, the world here. So here's the pump I was just talking about. So we can count all the in connection fittings. Hey, look, five, one, two, three, four, five. So you have the drain, which really doesn't count much as a fitting, but it does has to work. We have the fuel inlet from the tank and right opposite that we have the fuel inlet from the fuel control returning. So fuel is going to come through here, go through the swirl chamber. It um, will go through the pump and then either go around through the, the orifice and the um, pressure regulator and then and then um, back to the pump and keep recirculating, or it's gonna shoot off out of the pump and head over to, this is just added. Um, well, actually that's part of the, the aircraft, um, but you also have to plumb that port test into here. And it's gonna go through here up into the fuel control unit. Now, once it hits the fuel control unit, the fuel is either going to go back to the pump and do the whole thing over again, or it's gonna go off into the manifold valve assembly. So we're going to talk about this component right here. And note that we have two levers. So one lever is going to be my manual mixture control attached to the red lever inside the cockpit. And the other one is attached directly to the throttle body. This is attached to the black knob inside the cockpit. So whenever, is a laser choppy? Maybe it's just because I've had a lot of coffee. Um, whenever you move the black knob and you move the throttle plate, it is connected to this lever here. So this is going to be our final adjustment. So it's going to have, and well, I'll tell you. So the pump is going to do its thing. And when we already learned about that, so it's either going to bypass fuel or whatever it doesn't bypass, it's going to shoot out of the pump. It's going to come up and it's going to go through a screen and then it goes into the mixture control. And the mixture control is set up so it has a couple of orifices, and I'll show you how they work. So 
it's going to go then into the main metering jet, which is actually placed right inside of this plug right here. It doesn't show it, but the main metering jet's right there. And then, oh, wait a minute. I have a better picture for talking about this. Yes, I do. I'll go back. So just get the lay of the land. Got the pump. Pump goes to the fuel control unit. Fuel control unit's tied directly to the throttle body and bolted to it, by the way. Um, from the fuel control unit goes off and it goes into manifold assembly, manifold assembly to the fuel injectors. So in this system, you'd have two fuel gauges in the cockpit or uh, pressure gauges? No, they're, what they're doing is they're showing you um, how you would set it up in the port test This actually came out of the service bulletin that shows you how to hook up and, and do your fuel control system. So really your fuel flow is going to be tied into right here. This is the one that goes into the gauge to the aircraft, ship's gauge. Okay. Which is right here. It's really the metered fuel pressure off of this. So, but in order to adjust the high and low end, you have to be able to plumb these two in to, to do that. All right, we'll use this one. Okay, so this is that fuel control unit disassembled. Uh, yeah, it is disassembled. So there are basically three pieces to it. So one, two, three inside of the body here. So remember this one over here is going to be, whoops, so we've got to start it right. So fuel comes in, it goes through the screen and the first thing it hits is going to be the manual mixture control. So again, red knob and it's going to come into this little orifice here and the way this is going to rotate and I'll show, I'll actually take one apart here and show you guys. Um, and how this orifice can line up with the main metering jet. And if it's lined up fully with the main metering jet, then all the fuel is going to come over to here. If it's not lined up with the main metering jet, it's going to take whatever doesn't go through the main metering jet and shoot it off through this one that goes back to the return side of the pump. And that was why we had that, that extra hole there. So what does make it through here then hits, basically, it's funny, it's almost the same thing, but in reverse. So then you have this slides back and forth and adjusts another orifice here. And this is the final step. So if it's your wide open throttle, this is gonna be wide open and this comes right through and goes to the manifold. I go into idle and it'll start blocking off more of this and reducing the amount of fuel that can go this way. Well, of course that puts back pressure on and changes everything and um, adjusts how much fuel then goes through here. And so it all has a chain, chain reaction backwards, but, um, so anyway, that's, that's really, it's not really all there. It's, that's how it works. There's one more hidden passage that they don't talk about. Um, I'll just tell you what it is now. It's not a big deal, but when you go into idle cutoff, there's a hidden passage that has a check valve that allows fuel to come back this way. And it lines it up in idle with this, with the, with the third little orifice that allows fuel to go backwards and go this way so that it relieves pressure off of the downstream side uh, to get rid of the fuel in the lines so that you don't have it leaking into the cylinders. No, but that's not really material thing at this point. So, all right, fuel comes in, uh, main metering, uh, or sorry, the, the mixture, which just adjusts an orifice going into an orifice. And then we have another orifice coming out of that orifice, which so is two orifices in series, one after the other that determine finally how much fuel goes off into the uh, manifold valve and off to the engine. That was easy, wasn't it? Right. This is just a black and white version of pretty much the same thing, which actually is even worse because, is it? No. Eh, we've already covered that. Let me see what else we got. Uh, let's save the, this for a little bit later here, the manifold valve, and we'll come back to, how about we write some notes? Write some notes, slow down, go back over it again and see, see what we didn't get. So, all right. You guys still alive? Barely. Barely. See. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Barely. 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 Yeah. Yeah, those are not parkers here. All right. Where did we live off? Okay. So right here. B. Four basic units. Four basic units. 
for basic units. To the fuel control for the continental fuel control system. So these are the, the big parts. So one, we have the fuel injection pump. fuel injection pump. And now you know that's a very specialized pump and it would never work for anything but the continental system. We have two, we have the fuel air control unit. Or the FCU. I don't think I want to cross out that air for some reason. There's no air in there. It's called the fuel control unit. Uh, we have the manifold valve, which uh, on Lycoming they call it with the distributor valve. Now they're going to call it the manifold valve. So I'll probably default to calling it the wrong thing and say distributor valve at some point. And then the fuel discharge nozzles. All right, let's go back and let's talk about the fuel injection pump. Fuel injection pump. The fuel injection pump. Hey, Matt, you got the best looking place of all, man. You're outside there on the patio getting some sun. Yeah, it's nice out here. Cameron's got his maid back. She always come today about this time. All right, fuel injection pump. It is a positive displacement. Positive displacement. Um, rotary vane pump. It is engine driven. And it really has to be. There's no possible way we could take this thing off and attach it to even an electric pump and hope for it to work. Oh, sorry, electric, yeah, electric pump or electric motor. I'm sorry, there's no way we could take off this rotary vane pump and say, hey, let's just run it off in an electric, electric motor. Um, to do that, we would have to have the electric motor match the speed of the engine. It's engine driven because that's how it senses engine speed. So it's actually a very important point that it is engine driven. Could it be belt driven? Is it? No, it's actually driven by, it, it bolts right to the back of the engine and it's gear driven. Oh no, but I said, could they do it off of a belt? I won't want that. Yeah, you wouldn't, they could. Uh, you never want that because if there's any belt slippage, it would, it would uh, cause a major problem. Not to mention belts are prone to breaking. Operation. Operation. All right. So one. Fuel enters. Fuel enters at swirl chamber. Did you say squirrel? <laughs> I had a yeah. where's I gotta find my book. Yes, I got it. I opened up one of my pumps and found that inside of it. Is it a squirrel? <laughs> yes, that was Hannah. Because I kept teasing her about calling her a squirrel. She's the one that caught me. You guys know Hannah in second year. That was, yeah. was saying yeah. squirrel. And she finally raised her hand and said, are you actually saying squirrel? <laughs> I said, yeah, I was. And so she hid that inside one of the fuel pumps. And then when we opened up later, I popped out this little squirrel was inside the swirl chamber. All right, so fuel enters at the swirl chamber. Um, fuel enters, actually, I, or swirl chamber, or swirl well, I think. I call it the chamber. I think this book called it the well. Um, or so Anyway, uh, of, uh, of the vapor separator. What do you want to say? I don't know, it made it complicated. I just like, I'm just not going to say that. It just makes it more complicated. Enters the swirl chamber. That's what it does. 
Yeah, I'll just leave it, keep it simple. Um, all right, swirling. <coughs> Sorry. Pretzels. Um, swirling fuel. Allows vapors. Allows vapors to separate and float to top. Separate vapors to separate. And float to top of chamber. All right, then from there, from there, fuel enters the pump. And then it comes out of the pump. And then from the pump, um, let me see, I can write that from pump outlet. Fuel is then either sent to, so if I'm a little drop of fuel, I'm going to go <clears throat> to one of three places. MJ's on his phone again. Your mute's on, buddy, or something. <laughs> All right. Um, it's either going to go to the FCU, fuel control unit, which means out of the pump and on, or through the relief valve. Through the relief valve. Or a little bit of it will go through the vapor ejector. Vapor ejector. And the vapor ejector, I'll explain what the vapor ejector is here because that's all it is to it. So the vapor ejector, vapor, sorry, I'll send another. No. Vapor ejector. I'm just giving you a bad timing, MJ, don't worry about it. Is a small pressure, small pressure jet. Small pressure jet of fuel um, is this going to work, which feeds small pressure jet of fuel, small pressure jet of fuel. Now we'll go with it, which feeds, which feeds into a return line, into a return line. And it's a small pressure jet of, of fuel, which feeds into return line, I'll say back to tank, back to tank, back to tank. I don't really like what I wrote there. So is it not actual vapor or is it like, cause it's a little bit of fuel. So is it like by the time it reaches the tank, is it just vapor going into the tank? No, it's fuel, it's fuel and bubbles. So if I have something like this, All right, this is, this is exactly what, the, what it looks like. I just need to make that a little different. So I take fuel and if I put fuel through here or air through there or any sort of something, something through here, fluid through here, air is a fluid. When it gets to the Venturi, it's gonna create a low pressure right here, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and so it's going to create a low pressure right there because of Bernoulli's law principle. And then since, since I have a low pressure right there, it's going to create a suction here. And so any air bubbles right here are going to get picked mm -hmm. up, and carried off with the fuel. Okay. That makes more sense. All right. So it's, that's what, um, it, that's what they call the vapor ejector. And so this is going to go back to the tank. So back, back to tank. It's important to note that it's not going overboard. That would be a bad thing.
All right. The, let's see, the amount of fuel going to the F, uh, fuel control unit. So the amount of fuel, amount of fuel going to the fuel control unit is dependent dependent on the size on the size of the return path return path to the inlet side of the pump to the inlet side of the pump. And I know this isn't, well, it's controversial, I'm gonna say this, but it just kind of works for me. So if we can say fuel will take, will take the path, the path of least resistance. And the reason why that's not accurate or I have to be careful how I say it, if you have two paths and one is less resistance than the other, you can't really say, well, then the fuel is always going to go to the path of least resistance. Um, it doesn't really work that way. It's going to want to, but once that path of least resistance is completely used up and it's full of fuel, uh, then it's going to go the other way. So, but initially it's going to go the least resistance until, um, until it is maxed out on the flow in that area. So just keep that in mind. So it, some's gonna go back towards the inside of the pump, but whatever remainder is gonna go off to the fuel control unit. So the smaller the return, the smaller, the smaller the return path, return path to the inlet side of the pump, inlet side of, the pump, pump comma, the more fuel will go to the FCU. The more fuel will go to the FCU. All right, so Kevin had a good question. Um, the swirl chamber, what makes it swirl? It's actually the design. I'm gonna take one apart here in a little bit. Uh, unless you guys want me to stop and just take one apart and show you the whole thing and then come back and write notes later. It's, it's kind of whatever you think works best in your, your head. It's a 50-50. I mean, could you like take part, a part off and then work, work through that, write it? Um, go yeah, to I could next. probably do that. Okay, let me... Uh, Kind of get this set up here. Get a little more light going. All right, let's do the one that doesn't have the mixture control in it. Now, if I do this right, let me see. A pin video, we'll see how long it stays right there. All right, so light's looking pretty good. Is that too much light? Let me see. It, it looks perfect on my end. Okay, perfect on your end. All right, so this is the more simplistic pump. This is a very old pump that does not have all of the um, adjustments. So you'll notice there's no high-end metering adjustment on this one but it does have the one in the back. So um, here's the other pump right here. And you can see the high end metering orifice right there with the screw in it. And here's the low end back here and you can tell I've half taken it apart. And so uh, just know that, uh, well you'll see on the, on the old style, you just had to take it apart and change out the jet, which is ridiculous. They haven't done that in, I don't know, forever. Um, no, no, take part break efficiency. Never mind. Okay. Uh, okay. So this way. So to take it apart, 
I'm just going to have to pull these out. Hopefully, I don't get all messed up with it. Maybe a wise guy would have brought a wrench in or something. What's your problem there, Kevin? Ignored. Notes now, take apart, break, efficiency. Eh, I know, the heck with efficiency. That's why I asked. I was gonna go for the efficient way, but okay. So I'm gonna take this part right here. This right here is, uh, this section has the um, pressure relief valve, the diaphragm and all that. You can see right there, there is, that light is just a little bit too bright, I think. Okay, there's the orifice right there, Ooh, that worked. So that's what, not the main metering orifice, but that's that return orifice. So we'll put that aside. And then there's the pump, the rotary vein pump. I think they're kind of fun to watch it go around. Let's see. So Ooh, they slide back and forth. So that's the rotary vein pump. There's pump outlet. So what was I talking about? Oh, there's the drive end. So that just fits inside of a gear that's being uh, gear driven in, in the engine. And remember, the direction of rotation is when viewed from the drive end. So there's the drain in case the seals go out of this. Where was I with this thing? Um, okay, so fuel, where does fuel come in? So fuel, oh, we were talking about the, the vapor, the vapors up here. So here's the vapor ejector right there. In fact, you can see tiny little hole that's inside there. There we go. It's more the focal length. Okay, so fuel is gonna come in. This is the small, you can see that one's smaller than that one. So this is the main inlet right here. So this is coming in from the boost pump. It's gonna go into here and then it's gonna enter this chamber. So it's coming in here and so it comes in here and then it goes, where's it go? Oh, I had the wrong side. Comes in here. And it just goes right in here. And because it hits this, it swirls around inside of there because it's shaped that way. And it's going to swirl and it goes down to the bottom. Let's see, I've got my other camera right here. See how well this works. All right, there we go. So, ooh, cool, going down in the swirl chamber. So fuel is going to come in this way. Sorry, maybe I just make people sick when I do this. I don't know. It'd be helpful. This wasn't a bit, a huh? Just yeah. a tad bit. <laughs> Not really. From a ten-foot-long pole. All right. So fuel is going to come through here. Oh, look at that. Three D. Woo. Um, into the swirl chamber. And then, I'm sorry, I don't know about using this one. Hang on. I'm all tangled up. And then it's going to go down there. And there's the the route to the pump right down there at the bottom. Um, and on. Let me see. What else would I have? Yep, and then on the other side, you can see another hole coming in. That's returned from the fuel control unit. So I'm gonna go back to my other camera. It's been switched, it just takes a minute. All right, so in the inlet, in the swirl chamber, swirls around, goes through that uh, down here, it's gonna come out of here. So this is um, the inlet side of the pump right here. So I've got the pump sitting like this. And so we have the inlet side right here going to, oops, I got this all backwards. Yes, going to the, from here, going to the inlet side of the pump. Notice the inlet has a cap on it. So that's how I know it's the inlet. So inlet side of the pump, around the pump, do this way, and now it's got two choices. It's either gonna go out here to the fuel control unit, 
out of the pump, or it's going to come through here and then go into this chamber. And right there is that little orifice right down in there on its way back through here. And then from here it goes, hopefully you can follow. I'm just not going to make it real difficult here on you guys. It goes into this chamber where it's got the diaphragm and the low end, the low end diaphragm uh, relief valve. And then if this is open, then it just finds a path back through here, back through there, back into the inlet side of the pump and swirls around. So that's the return path. Return path goes from that orifice, relief valve, back, swirl chamber, back here, and just kind of goes, well, it goes to the pump and around. If it's in bypass, what happens is fuel comes through here, goes through the swirl chamber. It, of course, it tries to go through the pump, but it can't. It can't. Um, so it goes to the swirl chamber. And then there's another little passage inside the swirl chamber that's right behind this. This is a check valve. I'll pop it apart. It's missing a spring, but there's just a little cover right there. Covers off. It comes out of here, so it presses this little button open. And this is where the back side of the pump. So fuel will come out of this way from the boost pump and either go into here, back through that little orifice, back through um, the relief valve, or here out to the fuel control unit. Goes to the fuel, uh, some of the vapors then, or some of the fuel comes out of this little hole here. It's, it's tied into this right here. Comes out of here, goes into this hole. It's a very tiny hole. And then through this, which makes the venturi, and that's the bottom of the venturi right there, that little tiny hole, which picks up the vapors. Did that help? I think so. It helped more than before. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it did, for sure. Okay. Sure did. Well, hey, just like that, I look up and my screen switched over, so I have no idea. Screen to share. Okay, we're back to this. So, all right, so the smaller the return path in the side of the pump, the more fuel will go to the fuel control unit. I know it's kind of quick as I went through it. It's sort of hard to do with the camera and just show you all these little things. Um, okay, 6.6. .6. At idle, at idle, the main metering, or uh, the, I hate to call it the main metering orifice because it's not. Um, we'll call it the return orifice. The return orifice, return orifice is too big, too big to, and meter is really not the right word I want, but it's for lack of a better term, to meter return fuel, return fuel. Um, so the relief valve, so the relief, the relief valve determines PK. We can't see you. PK, can you, are you not seeing? Let me see, new share. Your camera. Is oh, my camera. Are you watching my tablet? Oh, heaven forbid you should see me right. Um, it's a dirty little thing. So thanks. So a main metering orifice is to the fuel. So the relief valve determines the amount. So the relief valve determines determines uh, how much fuel fuel is bypassed and how much. goes to the FCU. Now remember, it, it, you have to think about what, what component we're talking about, where we're at, because fuel gets bypassed, uh, what, twice in this thing. And so that makes things a little confusing, but we're inside the pump right now. We're just talking about the pump. So, um, so this relief valve, the relief valve, the relief valve, Valve is also known is also known as the low pressure or idle adjustment. The low pressure 
low pressure, we'll say, or idle adjustment. And sometimes I say low end. All right, you guys keeping up okay? And this is bit. one of the yeah. things we can adjust, right? Yes, sir. All right, at higher power settings, at higher power settings, higher power settings, the relief valve is open, higher power settings, the relief valve, relief valve is open wider, it's open wider than the metering orifice, than the metering orifice. So the metering orifice, so the metering orifice does all the metering. In the pump, that is in the pump. Doesn't do all the metering and the whole thing, just the metering in the pump. This is also known as, or let me see, the metering, metering orifice is also known as the high end adjustment. I'm gonna go back to this picture here and we'll just talk about what we just said, just to make sure everybody's following along here. There's a pointer. Okay, so um, look at my notes so I can say the same thing. So at idle, the main metering or the metering orifice here, this orifice here is too big to do the metering. So like I said, the fuel doesn't even notice it because there's just not enough going through there but it gets to this and it's gonna be closed because the spring is holding it closed. And so it's gonna to have to force it off its seat. So that's gonna build up a certain amount of pressure in here, just like we've talked about with so many other things, primarily um, like the discharge nozzle in uh, the, fuel, the uh, pressure carburetor, same concept. So this will be closed. So it's gonna build up pressure in here, which is gonna force fuel to go this way for a little bit. And then it's gonna open up and, and, re and regulate and keep the pressure in here about the same. And uh, so the more, the faster this starts to go, um, it's gonna in proportionally send out more fuel out here. Then at some point, this is gonna open up so where it is the same size as this opening. So now you got two openings that are gonna be just in series doing the same work. And then this is gonna open a little bit more and now this is bigger than this. And as we know, if you have two orifices in a row, whichever is the smaller does the work. Whichever one is bigger is redundant and doesn't, it, it's unneeded and it's uh, useless is what it is. So this is gonna open up to a point where it becomes completely useless and now we run off of this. So this is the low end and this right here is the screw that actually sticks out of the back of the pump that you can adjust, screw it in for higher, um, output, uh, screw it out for lower output. And then this is the orifice that I showed you and it was uh, 
not adjustable on the one we just looked at, but on all the newer ones, it's just a screw on the side, which I showed you a picture of. And so uh, you screw it in and make this, re if you make this smaller, do I, uh, see somebody's got to answer this one. Do I get more or less fuel to the engine if this is smaller? More fuel to the engine. More. More, more is correct. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yep. So, okay. Um, and if I make it big, see, that's one of the questions I will ask on the oral. I say, hey, you know, let's soup this engine up. Let's really make it go. You know, let's, let's take this and let's just bore this out just a little bit more so we get some more fuel to the engine. How's that going to work for me? It's wrong. Opposite, lower the fuel. Uh, that's not, uh, not going to work very well for me. That's how it's going to work. You're going to find yourself back at a real mechanic trying to fix it. So, okay. <laughs> so that's, that's what we wrote about. So main medium orifice is too small. So the um, relief valve does all the metering at low end. And then once the pump starts spinning faster at higher power settings, the relief valve is open wider than the metering orifice. Um, therefore, the metering orifice does all of the metering, and that's the high-end adjustment. And sir, go oh, ahead. You, you, you can, oh, thank you. I was going to say, uh, you said if we make it smaller, we would make more fuel go to unmetered, eventually to the metered, and that's going to make the engine run rich. Is that correct? Well, let's see, because I think you used the wrong phrase in there. If I open this up, if I drill it bigger, that means more fuel will want to bypass. And if more fuel is bypassing, that means less is going to the fuel control. No, I said if we closed it more instead of opening it. Sure. And that's exactly what the, the pump with the screw on the side is. That's how I adjust it. Screw it in, make this just a little bit smaller. And then the fuel, oh, never mind. That's too hard. We'll go this way. So less fuel starts bypassing and more goes this way. So it's about volume then, Kevin, right? It's about what? Volume. Yeah, it's about volume. Fuel volume. Yeah. yeah. It, well, exactly, but it's pressure too. So um, with this one, you really set it, you set up pressures, but you also set up flows at the same time. That's what makes it so complicated is you have to match the flow and the pressure and to get them exact is not easy. I will say that without the Porta test, life is easier because you only have gauges instead of flow. And so you just set up by the gauges. And so it doesn't take quite as long, but it's not as accurate. Hey, Kevin, on yeah. that relief valve, is that one the one we're not allowed to adjust or allowed to adjust? You should not adjust that. Okay. Just that wait. is, let me go this slide. This is the relief valve right here. Don't mess with that. If you mess with that, you're going to mess with the fuel flow through the whole, whole um, system. Oops, sorry. Okay. Yes. Should not mess with this. So that's the adjustable, this is the, the high-end metering orifice. This is the low-end relief valve. No touchy. What movie is that from? Oh, Emperor's New Groove. No touchy. I miss that movie. It was a good movie. That was a great movie. <laughs> All right, since pump, since the pump, is a positive displacement. Is a positive displacement. Since pump is positive, since the pump is a positive displacement. Pump, pump, comma. Um, engine speed. Engine speed affects the amount pumped. Affects. The amount of fuel pumped, which is to say higher RPM, higher RPM equals more fuel pumped per revolution. And of course, the opposite is true. So lower RPM equals less fuel pump. Per rev. Uh, 
All right, the pump. I thought boost pump kind of just like a primer in the system. It's all it is. That's all I use it for. The pump has two adjustments. I actually, I had a, a video, I have a video, but it's in my office at school, which I'm not supposed to go get. And it shows you how to adjust this. And I would show it to you, but you'd wish you'd get the coronavirus and die. That's probably a bad joke. It's horrible. It is absolutely horrible. I would rather probably sit here and shove my screwdriver underneath my fingernail than have to watch it. Um, for every five minutes of actual instruction, it is five minutes of the same repeated warning over and over and over, and it just gets maddening. Maybe I should get it and like figure out how to run it and then edit it so we don't have to watch the warnings. Just put it all together and make it really a quick video. It is interesting to watch and put the port of tests and stuff on and run the engine, but the warnings just get a little bit, uh, it really just goes so slow. Uh, pump has two adjustments. We talked about these already. It has the low end pressure relief valve. So the low end pressure relief valve. And remember at low RPM, fuel is controlled by the relief valve. Fuel is controlled. by the relief valve. And B, the adjustable orifice. And uh, the adjustable orifice, that's the, the high end? That's right. Got it. I should have wrote that, high end adjustable orifice. I'll put that over here. And so above idle, the relief valve is open and fuel and open, relief valve is open. And fuel is metered by the high end adjustable orifice. High end adjustable orifice. No touchy. And I know it's break time, let's see, well, yeah, we can take a break wherever I want, right? So we'll stop right here and I'll see you guys in 10 minutes.